Can you guys believe it's December already? Because I can't, this year has gone by so fast. Um, but anyways, my name is Beth. I'm here on a cool December morning in Sacramento, which is zone 9B. And I'm going to just do a really casual walk through garden tour to show you what we have growing here this time of year. What I love about December gardening and especially winter gardening is it's so laid back. In the summer, you're constantly, at least we're constantly like in the garden, like every day or every other day checking on things. And I honestly haven't been here in the garden in like a week. So I'm gonna be showing you what I see after not tending to anything for uh, many days. Um, so let's go. So if you guys are new here, we live in a suburban neighborhood. Um, like a less than a quarter acre lot and we have uh, about six garden beds in our backyard where we do a lot of different cut flowers and garden vegetables. For my two rooms personally I like to start back here um, in this bed and I just like to show you kind of everything that we're growing and kind of what we're, our challenges are at the moment and what, what we're planning. So um, we'll start right here. In this little corner, you can see we got some oregano right here, which is a perennial. It is growing super thick. I, it really needs a haircut um, because if I just let it grow, you can see it's trying to like plant itself. Um, actually, it has planted itself um, like with runners. So I just need to cut this back and dry some out for our kitchen garden, or our kitchen herbs. And we also have some echinacea. This is. I planted echinacea in a few different spots throughout the garden, but this this spot right here has been the best. Um, it's really starting to grow in. This is also a perennial, so I'm just gonna leave it here. It'll probably bloom all winter, and then hopefully throughout the summer too. Um, and right over here, I actually need to trim this back. I don't even remember what this is, but I do have, we did plant some uh, purple bok choy right here, which um, this little plant we got as a start from the nursery and it came, there was two in there and I couldn't separate them. So I just kind of planted both. Um, they could really be harvested. Um, I think it hasn't started bolting yet, but it's definitely time that this thing is ready to, to get cooked up. And then interior, you'll see this also giant cabbage. Um, this is a Napa cabbage, also known as like a Chinese cabbage. Um, we harvested our first one earlier. I guess it was last week already. It's been it's been a little while. Um, and so this one is pretty big and ready as well. It has a really nice compact head there. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's time for that too. And then there's an, a second one in this bed right here, it's a little bit smaller, so we have more time on that one. And in this bed, I kind of interplanted some different onions. I have uh, some leeks here we got as starts from the nursery. They're looking pretty good. Um, over here, kind of underneath this giant zinnia, which I'll talk about a little bit later, I did plant some onions. Um, these we got as starts too. I have, I guess, red onions over here, and they're just kind of planted kind of where I could fit them right inside there. This zinnia is growing very strong still. It's the orange uh, Benares giant zinnia. It's been one of my favorites. And let me try to step over a little bit to this side. And here I have another perennial herb. This is thyme, another one where it needs a haircut uh, really bad because it's starting to kind of take over this side of the bed. So I'll probably be trying to do that this week as well. And then here on the back side, you can see some more of those onions um, kind of peeking through. I tried to plant some beets along. There's a couple that actually came up. I just direct sowed these from seed. There's one hiding kind of uh, deep in here, but um, it also looks like this is mustard. It looks like last year we planted mustard in this bed, and I think these are volunteers because um, we let it go to seed, trying to make homemade mustard that did not turn out <laughs> well. It's a lot harder to do than we anticipated, but there's just some volunteer mustard back here and you can kind of see that time is trying to take over right here too. So that's kind of it for this bed. Um, let me move along 
So this bed right here is part of our arch trellis bed. In this bed, we planted peas all along on both sides for the arch itself. Um, the ones over on the eastern side um, are doing a lot better, I think just because of the sun. They get that really nice afternoon sun. Um, uh, when I'm doing this, since we have these gutter plants, I've tried to weave the peas back to this side to grow up the back, but because I've kind of neglected gardening and checking on this, I have neglected to do that. So there are some kind of growing a little bushily, but it is what it is and I'm not gonna make too much of a fuss about it, but you can see we're already starting to get some peas, which is really exciting. We planted a mix of shelling peas and sugar snap peas, so a little bit of both. Uh, I'll probably harvest some of those for, for this week and put them in my salads and things. So I mentioned earlier the zinnias. These, this is the red or the scarlet, I think, uh, Benary's Giant. So from the, the same variety here, and these have been growing all summer, all year, really. I, I think we planted them back in like March, I wanna say. Um, I've been really wanting to keep them in here because it's such a beautiful pop of color, but I noticed today that we're starting to get signs of powdery mildew and not just on um, the stalks, like usually powdery mildew, I'll start to see the first signs like here, um, which you can see it's kind of dying back. It's just run its course, it's tired, um, but now we're starting to get them on the, the flower heads and like the healthy, fresh flowers rather than just like the, the spent ones. So that's a big sign that this really should get pulled. Um, we'll probably throw it in our yard waste bin so it doesn't spread or put any bad um, mildew and disease into our compost um, for next year. But um, kind of bittersweet that this will need to get pulled, but it will definitely help out and give us some space underneath to maybe plant something new. Um, I do have some more zinnias. This is just a, a smaller variety. I'm not sure the exact name. Um, but this is looking okay for now. You can see it's starting to to get a little um, signs of just cold. It's starting to get a little bit cooler at night. Um, by the end of the month, we'll probably start getting some more frost. But um, so far, we have not had much frost here in Sacramento. So a lot of our um, flowers from the summer, like this floss flower here, this agertum, um, is just absolutely loving this cooler weather. Um, and it's just gr overgrowing. Um, Lucas would love to pull that to <laughs> plant more vegetables, but I've been um, fighting hard to keep it because it's just nice color and it's good for pollinators. And I just, I really like it. So um, over here, if we look a little bit closer, you'll see these are more leeks that I planted. I started these from seed. I direct sowed them here. Um, from Botanical Interest is the seed company I, I started them from. Um, you can see they're a little bit smaller and thinner than the ones over on the other side where I started them from, or I planted starts. Um, but they're looking okay. I think here's another volunteer carrot because I had carrots in this bed last year. Um, I think that's what this is back here too. Another carrot maybe? Oh yeah, you can see that little head right there. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll just kind of see what happens here. Um, here's another gomfrena flower, um, kind of a leftover from the summer garden plant. And then back here we have, here's cauliflower. Look at that beautiful head that we're starting to see form. Um, I think this is cauliflower too, but no head yet. I didn't do a great job labeling these and I probably should just cut this back just a bit to give it a little bit more space and room to grow. And I'm gonna come back and cut these, uh, if I can reach it, these dead leaves off um, too, just for good health and to, just to help maintain uh, healthy plants and prevent any disease from growing. Um, over here we do have, if you remember, two little garden boxes next in, or inside or interplanted. Um, these are just extra starts that we had. I think, of course I didn't label these. I think they're Brussels sprouts, but I could be wrong. 
Um, and if you remember from last week, we had um, installed some of these deep drip watering stakes. We just did a giveaway on our Instagram for these. Super cool and great way to promote deep watering in your raised beds and for trees. So definitely recommend those. Let me walk inside here and show you this other garden bed or box. Um, here we have some kale and shoot, I don't know what that is. <laughs> More kale back here. It's actually looking pretty good. And then I intermixed some violas. Um, I started from seed and we had some nasturtium here last year. So you can see that it's just kind of volunteering and growing right there. So uh, yeah, these are definitely ready to get harvested. <clears throat> and then over on the other side of the arch trellis, we have packed this baby full. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we have um, more herbs here. This is sage. Uh, I could use a little haircut. Something's been munching on it and it's good to kind of cut some of that off. And the more you cut, the more it's just gonna grow and not get so woody. Like this one right here is pretty rigid, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I don't want it to go to seeds. So sometimes cutting those top flowers will just help prevent um, like from seed going to seed too quickly and will encourage a lot more growth from the from the bottom and then back here is another one of those napa cabbages this is another one that's really ready so we're about to have a lot of cabbage um, probably need to do some sort of sauerkraut because i don't think we can have lettuce rolls every day even though that wouldn't be so bad right here is brussels sprouts which i'm so excited for uh, if you look here, you can start to see the little heads of the Brussels sprouts forming, which is very exciting. Um, these two probably should have separated. I think I tried to, but I was nervous about um, destroying too much of the roots when I transplanted them. So I just kind of let them go. But So it looks a little crowded, but I think so far they're doing okay. And right next to it, we have broccoli, which we're starting to get a really beautiful looking um, head of broccoli on there. So that's very exciting. Um, probably needs another couple weeks to um, get a good, good size. And then um, right in front of it, I noticed this earlier and I was kind of waiting to show you guys um, on these two plants. This is, I'm pretty sure cauliflower. Um, and right next to it is another, let's see, I didn't label things and now I don't know. <laughs> I think it's cauliflower, but it might be broccoli, but either way, it has become infested with aphids. Look at those. Um, aphids tend to go after um, new growth or some leaves that are a little bit softer. So like a mature plant like this broccoli, you likely won't see them on. Um, but this one here, it's kind of tucked because we just planted really close together. Um, it's not getting nearly as much sunlight, so it hasn't grown quite as well as some of these other plants next to it. And those aphids have made it home to linger. So what I'm probably going to do is just cut, cut this entire plant out. Um, normally I would spray it with neem oil because neem oil does a really good job for us in tackling um, aphids or white flies, some of those other garden pests. But for this, just because it's so bad, I'm gonna just cut the whole thing out. It's probably not gonna produce much anyways. And then I will still spray neem oil on the rest of the bed just to make sure I tackle it um, and there's no aphids lingering so they don't move um, from that plant to a different plant. Next to that, I have another herb, which is dill. Um, this is looking so good. Um, I should harvest some of this now. I usually um, struggle with dill and getting aphids in my dill. So it's kind of nice to have this little trap plant right next to it. Um, so I should, I'm gonna harvest some of this before I do too much to disturb and move around these aphids. Um, and then here we planted some more cauliflower. We planted these later than some of the other ones, so that's why they're a lot smaller. Plus, this side of the bed gets not very much sun during our winter months, so typically 
our best growing um, vegetables are going to be on this side and all our smaller. <laughs> it just it tends to grow a lot slower over on that side. Hi, Lib. Liberty, come here. Come here. Come here. Hi, Lib. You want to say hi to our YouTube family? Say hello. <laughs> She's like, will you throw the bumper? I don't want to say hi. Say hi. Okie dokie. So um, over on this bed, we have, wow, in this video, I can really see all of the moss kind of growing onto our uh, decomposed granite. Wow. Um, anyways, uh, this garden bed right here is on the other side of our pergola. Um, this is where we planted garlic this year, um, which so far so good, I think. Um, actually, I think this is grass. Uh, grass weed. <clears throat> oh, and this one. Wow. Um, so we planted some different elephant garlics, which have um, popped up here in the center. Um, a couple have been slow to pop up, but we're starting to see them. Um, so we're just kind of giving them time. So we planted those on both sides. And then down the center, we planted, here's another weed. Uh, we planted some onions, uh, which they put down, these are red onions, um, right down the center. And here on the back side, wow, I need to get my clippers down here and remove um, some of these lower leaves that have gotten eaten by worms. Um, that's what this, if you're wondering what this white powder is, that's garden dust. Um, I'll drop a little thing right here because I'm not sure exactly what it's called. I just call it garden dust. Um, but we sprayed that probably about a week ago um, to help with some cabbage worms and loopers. And wow, there's one right there. I'm gonna go grab my glove and get that. Um, but that's supposed to help control them a little bit. Obviously it's probably not doing as good a job as manual picking is. If you saw um, probably a couple months ago in September when we started planting a lot of these, we had a really bad time with loopers and worms and things eating my brassicas. Um, and that just honestly, I think it just takes checking it daily um, while you see them and squishing them and manually pulling them off is the best way. Um, but I mean, you can try cabbage dust or the garden dust. Uh, it doesn't appear to be working that great, but you never know. Where did that guy go? see anymore. Oh no. What I hate the most. Slugs. Ugh. I'm gonna go get salt for that. Lucas will just pull them off but I just can't with slugs. They are so disgusting to me. I had a really bad experience as a kid where I was digging in the dirt looking for worms, which worms are cool. Um, but grabbed slugs and kind of, kind of just can't touch them anymore. <laughs> okay, and I should give you a little disclaimer. Um, if you have a lot of slugs, salt probably isn't the best way to, um, to handle them. I'm going to wait till I can put my phone down to do that since he's kind of on the underside. Um, if you have a lot of slugs, I, I maybe wouldn't recommend salt. Uh, even though salt does directly kill the slugs, um, I don't know if that's going to affect the rest of your plants um, in your garden. Um, there are other ways. Lucas always talks about doing like a slug trap, which this is not the first time we've seen slugs, although it's the first time in this bed I've seen them. Um, when we get back to our, our U-shaped garden bed, um, that's where I've seen slugs. So if we see more back there, we might put out a slug trap, which is basically burying a um, like mason jar or some sort of jar into the earth. So it's like at the, the soil level, pouring in like beer or something sweet that attracts the slugs. And basically the slugs will go in to get to that sweet thing and not be able to come out. Um, so it's probably a little bit more humane and maybe a better way to deal with them if you have a lot. But since this is just one, I'm gonna salt this little guy, so rest in peace, my slug friend. 
Okay. Um, next, I'm going to show you uh, Lisa, who's our lemon tree. This is her second year growing season, or second year we've gotten lemons from her, and it's pretty much about time. Look how good that looks. Um, so probably here in the next week or so, maybe a couple weeks, we'll um, start harvesting those. Um, you can usually leave them on the tree uh, for many weeks, and um, I'm sure, you know, if I just needed one lemon, I could definitely just pluck the one. Um, and if you're not sure if the lemons are ready, if it's the right color, like, I don't know if my camera is going to show you like how good of a color this is. Um, I'd recommend just picking one and cutting it open and seeing if it's ripe. <laughs> and if it's, if it is, then you're obviously in the clear. Um, and if you remember from last week, we were installing more deep drips. Um, Lisa, this is kind of what sparked us to research into these deep watering stakes is we had this really bad windstorm, um, probably a couple months ago now, but this tree, since it was so heavy with fruit, was starting to rip out of the earth because her roots are just so superficial um, and not growing deep. So you can see we were able to get one in pretty well. These other two, we hit that hard pan clay. And if you're local to Sacramento, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is a bear, um, but we need to get like a sledgehammer and uh, hammer those in deeper um, but that's as far as we could get them for now um, and if you remember from last week's video too where we talked about the deep drip stakes we also sprayed Lisa for black spot which you can see right here um, it's typically something we we spray all of our citrus trees for in around this time of year just as a preventative but we actually saw some of that black spot here last week so um, it was great. So if you're curious more about that, just um, watch that video that we posted last week and you will hear Lucas talking a lot more about it. <sighs> okay, so let's keep going. Um, here are our four tree boxes, we call them. This first one is looking so good. It has our kale. Um, I'm gonna be harvesting some of this for this week. I'm gonna make some, maybe some smoothies or um, just make some mixed greens. You'll see in a minute, the rest of our, our lettuce bed is growing crazy wild right now. So that's good. Um, you might have seen me picking a lot of this straw leaf out. That's um, just solely from our uh, straw mulch that we had down. Um, it tends to uh, reseed a little bit, but thankfully, oh, um, they're really easy to pull out. Um, and don't do much and you'll see we have more this is the eight inch uh drip watering stake um, that we put in these four beds um here we have more weeds <laughs> it's not what i'm doing to talk about but we do have some beans um these are surprisingly growing relatively slow um they've been in the ground did i write it on here we planted them on the 10th of October. So it's going on two months and that's as big as they are. Um, so I might try fertilizing maybe a little bit more. Um, could just be winter, winter sun is not nearly as good. Um, but I was hoping it would be much taller on this trellis. Um, you'll see here's some more beans here in the center. Um, this is a different type of bean, but it's definitely growing up the trellis nicely. Um, so we'll see. And then these little bushy things, these are volunteers. These are potatoes, <laughs> I think. Um, it's actually looking pretty good. Um, but we had potatoes in here last year, so you can tell that we didn't get them all out. Um, but I guess it's what keeps on giving. And then I uh, did plant some beets um, in this little bed too. Um, and here you probably saw from last month's video, I think it was last month, uh, we harvested our Jerusalem artichokes. So those are still in here. Uh, I'm not going to dig for them right now, but um, we just kind of pull those as we want to eat them and move on. Back here is, um, I guess, a failed attempt. We <laughs> tried to seed down a bunch of marigolds. I should try again because it's supposed to rain later today. But we planted them, um, direct sowed a bunch of seeds and just kind of 
forgot about them and didn't water well. It hasn't been very wet this last month here and um, I think they just didn't get enough water. So maybe with the next rain, we, you know, hopefully the seeds are still in there, um, but hopefully um, I might just throw down a few more just for good measure because this is the bed uh, where we have a nematode issue and marigolds are part of our strategy to help combat those nematodes. So definitely um, need some of that in here. And then here in the back are, um, if you remember us planting beans, these are all different kinds of um, beans. I guess we have uh, kidney beans, painted ponies, calypso, and a navy bean, I believe. Um, so you can tell this is the side that gets a lot more sun here in the winter. There's kind of a, a lull right here, I think, just because of bad, um, just not as, not as good of sun, basically. But um, things are growing. Uh, no, no signs of any beans yet, but um, it's still early. Uh, they're not supposed to produce probably until later this month is kind of the timeline for them. So hopefully we get a few shelling beans from them, or not shelling beans, I'm thinking of peas, um, but a few beans for different foods. And then um, beans are also just really good nutrient. Um, they put nutrients back into the soil because this was over the summer, all of our tomatoes and peppers, which are heavy, heavy nitrogen feeders and beans tend to put nit nitrogen back into the soil. So that was part of that strategy too. Um, and we just wanted to eat some beans. <laughs> so, uh, okay. And then here, this, this part of the bed gets almost no sun. So we plant lettuce here because there's not a whole lot else to, um, plant that can tolerate not a lot of sun um, but you can see these are getting super super bushy and big um, it's definitely time to start harvesting um, so we can do like a cut and come again style uh, lettuce um, you might notice this is not lettuce this is actually borage um, just for some beneficial pollinators and insects and uh, there's some more floss flower back here that Asiatim um, that's still growing strong. Okay, and then the last few things I just want to show you, um, I don't, we could sometimes overlook talking about them, but um, here is our rosemary. Our roses are back along this wall, which they're pretty much done for the year. We had a pretty bad storm that kind of toppled them over and they've recovered okay. Um, but I had to cut them back pretty aggressively. And you can even tell on this rose that it's just a lot of different signs that it's ready to, to just go dormant. Um, so we'll probably cut this back. We'll probably wait until January to, to cut them um, at the base. I did a, a big video about that last year, um, but we might revisit that next month. Don't mind the dog poop if you see it. <laughs> Um, and then here is Leonardo, the lime tree. He's looking pretty good. We talked about him in last week's video with the tree stakes. And then over also along the fence, we have a fig tree that's hiding back here. This needs to get in the ground. Uh, we keep saying we're going to put it in the ground and then life happens and we just get busy, but, um, it's okay. And then right in front is our avocado tree, which we get mixed reviews. Avocados can be challenging to grow in Sacramento. I don't know that from experience, but that's what people tell me. Um, but so far, Alfonso is doing pretty darn good. This is his second year. We planted him at the same time as our lemon and lime trees. Um, the thing with avocados is they just require a lot of water, um, which if you're familiar with the Sacramento heat in the summer, it can be challenging to give them as much water as they need. But we put in those uh, deep drip stakes around him as well. Um, but yeah, he's looking pretty darn good. And then I kind of want to show you guys this part of the yard and you guys can maybe help us decide what to do with it. Um, we have these Pityosporum trees. <laughs> They're usually like bushes, but we, when we moved in a couple years ago, they were just 
they, I mean, they're like this. Um, what's nice about them is in the spring, they get full of blooms and it's one of the early um, flowers that our bees love. So a part of me wants to keep them, but Lucas and I have been talking about cutting them out, deleting these tree bushes so we can plant a lot more fruit trees. Um, like that fig really needs a good spot. We have this palm tree right here that eventually needs to go because of the electrical wires. Um, so we might have a spot or two right here, but this is a huge part of our yard um, that's very tempting to cut those out and maybe add some fruit trees. We've also talked about expanding our garden space because this side of the yard gets the best sun and we just really didn't take advantage of that when we added the garden on the other side. Um, but we have this garden bed here I'll talk about um, here in a minute, but what do you guys think? Should we, should we add some more garden space and take this out? I also kind of like having it here because it hides the ugly um, tower that's kind of in the corner of our yard and our neighbor has a tree on the other side that's really ugly and dead. So it kind of hides all of that, but um, perhaps taking it out would be best. I don't know. What do you guys think? Drop me a comment. Help us decide. Okay, and then the last bed I'm gonna talk about is our our master bedroom bed. I don't know what else to call it because that's our master bedroom right on the other side. Um, we have some really good nasturtiums there and kind of, kind of growing wild. Um, but yeah, those are there. And then in the bed itself, we have planted um, some more bok choy that's pretty much ready to go. Um, here is a broccoli, which if you look very closely, it's starting to grow ahead down there if I can get it to focus. Um, so that's pretty exciting too. Um, more bok choy and you can see this thing has cabbage poop. I didn't know what that was until recently. I feel kind of silly, but yeah, this thing's this is just like worm fest back, back in this corner. I've been trying to, oh, that's a really bad leaf I need to cut. I've been trying to stay on top of it, but it's, it's just challenging. And honestly, December gardening, winter gardening, you don't want to go too hard. That's kind of, I kind of alluded to it at the beginning of this video, but the best thing about winter gardening is it's just relaxing. Um, you don't want it to be stressful. Sometimes the summer garden can get a little stressful because it's such a short, supposedly short growing season. Um, so I haven't been stressing about it like I might in the summer, but I do need to address this and maybe probably it's time to harvest this whole thing. Um, look how big it is. <laughs> so maybe I'll do that and then I'll give um, these broccoli and then this uh, Brussels sprout a little bit more space to grow as well. Um, this is like a little teddy bear sunflower. He's pretty cute. I kind of planted it not knowing if it would grow this time of year and it did. And it's super cute. It's the only one that bloomed. Um, but I think I'm going to plant a whole bunch more of those next summer because I think they're adorable. And then you can see, so you saw in that last bed, that borage. Look at this one. <laughs> this is huge. It's so big. And this is just the difference in sunlight from that bed over on the other side of the yard to this bed because this bed gets sun pretty much until like 1 p.m. when it uh, goes to the other side of the house. Um, so you can just see this is another borage. Um, these are just really good pollinator friendly plants. They're good for the soil. They're good for everything. Um, but this thing is a monster. Can you see how big the stock is down there? It's gigantic. Um, but yeah, here's some, I think this is celery actually. Um, I think some of the other stuff I might've mislabeled, but cause I know we had some more of more celery in different parts of the yard. Um, and I think this little guy looks like a, some sort of brassica. He's just getting eaten and probably sunned out a little bit by that borage, but that's okay. Um, look at this nasturtium <laughs> growing behind the raised bed. I might just let him go. He's just a little fighter, just trying to, trying to get 
trying to do things. Nasturtium's great, but it's one of those if you don't um, if you don't want it somewhere, get rid of it right away because it will self seed like crazy. That's all of this. This is self seeded. Um, there's some lemon balm back there too. He's looking a little a little tired. But it's probably, it'll be good to get these roses cut back here soon. Just because it's, it's that time. Well, I guess that's it for our December garden tour. Um, I'm hoping you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions about anything I talked about, drop me a comment. I'd love to answer it. And if you guys have any ideas, if you guys want to see anything in particular during these winter months, I don't know if you've noticed, we've slowed down a bit on um, doing weekly YouTube videos. It's just challenging to push content that, I don't wanna push content just to make content. I want it to be valuable to you guys. So if there's anything you wanna see, let us know in the comments. I'd love to cater to you guys and um, yeah, show you show you more of whatever we're doing if you want to see it. So thanks for watching and uh, check out our Instagram, follow us there. Um, that's the best way to keep in touch with us and we will see you next time.